Um, I get angry quickly. Mm, that's an interesting one. I said false. I said false. false. Okay, yeah. that's an orange straight away. Yeah. We don't really want people to get angry, especially young men. But if they do do that, um, one of the things is, what do you do with your mates who get angry quickly? So it's a really I, interesting. I don't really think I have too many friends that get angry. Ah, see, well, that would be part of why I see your group as quite different in yeah. many ways. Yeah. But if you go, like yeah, when I'm working with a whole football team, there are angry people yeah. out there, especially on the field. I think if you've, the, you've if played you, sport. I don't okay. think Marcus or someone gets angry quickly. Well, there are, there <laughs> are people who yeah, might get angry quick, but the thing I is, again, ah, but this is teaching them how to actually get that, this this controlling breath that I am so into, that trying to get people to actually count yeah. so they know that. So anyone that's listening to this should look, listen to the bit where we talk about that and how to do that and why it should be practiced all the time. Because that's the one thing about this, you know, Me Too campaigns and the anti-violence campaigns, is if we don't teach people, first of all, what it feels like to be angry, what does it feel like when, what do people feel like when they get angry? Got any idea? They're going to blow up. Yeah, so what, physiologically, what is, happens to them? I feel the adrenaline. Yeah, well, the, too much adrenaline comes on board, which makes you get what? What, what do they describe your head as? Hot-headed. Hot-headed, very good. So hot, your muscles become tense. Now remember, again, you haven't seen all of this, all of my two and a half hour session, which often I, I always do before I do this. We then talk about the center of breath, but we talk about being in the flow is thinking. When you are thinking, you make good decisions. When you go above that, you're in system one, which is um, emotional, hot-headedness. And so people do dumb things on football fields or say dumb things in relationships or all of that because their head is hot. It is not in the thinking zone. It's in the stupid zone. All right? So just telling people beforehand, if you do this wrong, oh, you'll get this fine. When you are not thinking, you're not yeah. thinking about anything. So that's why I have a problem with all of these um, courses and that, that say, oh, we're going to teach you to be resilient by this. We need to teach how to deal with anger, how to bring it down, and it works on a footy field, it works for all of this. So you guys don't even see it, but what you need to see it is, it is a problem for some, and if you're playing with them, or they're your mates, how do you actually help them deal with it rather than just say, oh, come down, mate, which can be there. Another thing is touch can calm people down. If you don't know someone, though, and they're angry and you go to touch, it won't help, yeah. right? It actually yeah. could make it worse. Yeah. So all of these things are how do we do this, how do we deal with it? And this is why young men who are get angry very quickly, and what's your next question, both of you two? I hold on to anger. Okay. Oh, false. False, false. I would agree with that with both of you two. So they're more orange. But if you get young men who not only are angry but hold on to anger, one of the things I have them straight away in the car is learning to turn on, to, they should sponsor me, 1323 on the radio because it's an AM station, you can get it on dab radio too. But it plays all 60s and 70s songs, very few which are angry and narky. Yeah. Well, if you're already angry and you hold on to it and you're in a car, guess what starts to happen? Road rage. Road rage. So this is this whole thing about... How do we get heart rates down? How do we get people thinking? And almost every violent act, if you listen to people two days afterwards, they are totally, you know, they can't believe what they look like. And that's that going over the top. They don't recognize it. So learning and practicing, bringing your heart rate up, bringing it down when you're not angry, allows you to help you when you are angry because you've practiced it. So this is where for you guys, for me, one of the biggest things is teaching non aggressive men who don't get angry how you can actually help the others because no one's ever done that they've just told them don't get angry calm down and i go how do we calm people down how do we teach them to notice about themselves all right next one others would describe me as moody hopefully sometimes i said false orange and there and what's <laughs> isaac what would i say josh i would say josh will make a good partner for anyone that's there <laughs> Life. <laughs> um, I laugh because of this. Life is about relationships with people. Yeah. If you get moody, at some point you are putting what you feel like onto other people. Yeah, and but I don't know do if, if I ever feel as moody as I betray them. Oh, well, that's an interesting one, and that's worth a conversation with people. Wait. Actually, I'm not the like, camera guy. I, I put on like a fake moodiness to be like, I don't know, so I just like doing Center of attention. <laughs> 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 
But again, it's actually worth thinking about because I have people that say yes to that, yeah. right? And if you say yes to that, it, at some point, people don't want to be around you. Yeah. You know, if you've got people who you know in your life who are moody, they exhaust you. Now, often people haven't thought that, you know, oh, the world's all about me. No, it's not. It's actually about how you interact with others. So if you're moody, what's creating it? What can you do differently? And again, this is this whole thing with music. This whole thing of if you're going to do that, take two seconds out. Go by yourself. But change how you are before you come back again. And especially as a parent, because if you're a moody parent, kids don't actually know what's going to happen. And um, I've actually watched a coach who was like that. And the players never knew whether he was joking or about to be really seriously yelling at them. Because mm-hmm. sometimes he'd do that and go, ah, it's all a joke, don't worry about it. And other times they were there and they went, we couldn't read the difference in their mood. And all of a sudden we're getting screamed at versus laughing together. So this is really important with this. So again, when I'm sitting with people, my job is to make them happy. And so I tell them if they're moody, it's going to impact on all their relationships in their life. So that means, how are you going to actually bounce back quickly and go, oh, I'd rather be someone who people want to be around. All right. And if you're really, really feeling bad, you need to actually do something about your own mood. It's not really someone else's job. However, if you've got a good mate, we can stick their arm around you and say, mate, come on, we're going to go and do this. And it's fun. You'll actually help change people's mood. Next one. I want to be the best in most things I do. True, true. Orange. Okay, that's that's a drive answer. You know, like, in other words, if I'm giving you a yellow here if for something and you are driven, you'll actually work to going, ah, oh, I reckon I can change that. And I didn't even know that because that's Kahneman's what you see is all there is. Yeah. So, again, this is one of those ideas with where you're sitting there, you're going, okay, um, I, I want to be best... It doesn't have to be everything. And in fact, I would like you to understand when it says most things, it means that you're going to put the best effort you can and you're going to forgive yourself if you make a mistake. Mm. But you're going to try really hard. I also need you to understand there is glory and fun in doing things that you are no good at. So if I cook a cake and it doesn't go well, yeah. people are going to get fun. disappointed. I go, no, I'm not a master in that. I haven't spent enough hours doing it. So why should I possibly get annoyed at myself? Yeah. And that's that same thing with um, you, with young players. There is no doubt getting annoyed at them will stop them or they won't do as well. And in the long run, the way you get better at anything, if I want to be a great cake cooker, I just need to cook lots of cakes and also watch Mary Berry on Great British Bake Off or that to get some ideas of what champions do in that area. All right, next one. People will or do recognise my importance. I said true. I said true. Well, I think we should have an orange for that. And that's see again. Now here's an interesting one. I will have people that will say that, but they get angry quickly. They worry about other people's opinions, and there's some <coughs> more coming. If you are placed in a leadership group and you actually don't feel like it, or you doubt yourself, mm-hmm. it's one of the hardest things to do. So you guys actually are saying at your age, people, I'll have people who have put false to that, that are actually, I'm going, well, you're in the Australian team, you know, like there are ways that you're seen as this, but it's how you value yourself that's most important. So this is going back to how you feel like it. And when you're feeling good, you think people value your importance. It may be as a friend. Yeah. It may be in what you do at uni or it may be in being my nephew. You know, how cool is that? (laughs) You know, like... All of that, to me, is, you know, it's important because it's actually building you and making you feel better and making you feel good. So that is excellent. And again, I will tell you, because you've all got parents who are getting older, this is a really important thing for people who are in their 50s and 60s and 70s who are actually quite important at some stage. And then, you know, like I used to rule the world, that song, you know, like I listen to that. I see the fear in my enemy's eyes. Now I sweep the streets, you know, like... It's an interesting song because it's exactly like people who are very important all of a sudden become not so important. If they're related to you or if they're people that you care about, make sure that they you find a way to help them contribute and feel important because otherwise that's one of the things that their life will start lacking colour. All right, next one. I don't hold grudges. True. True. Orange. And again, this is an interesting one. Grudges are not getting annoyed at someone and going, <laughs> um, oh, I did this or I did that, you yeah. know. Um, if 
someone does something, you know, I annoy you, Josh, and you go, I'm going to show Jenny. All right? That's not a grudge. That's actually a little bit of drive yeah. from someone saying you couldn't do it. So, you know, I laugh when people talk about Mark and Alan Scott because when I asked him, he said it wasn't premeditated. He just got up there and said, you're wrong because he thought, oh, someone's told me I couldn't and I can. It's not a grudge. That's actually a driver, all right? Grudges are things that p- consume you and you spend time plotting about how you're going to get that person back. And in fact, that spoils your life because you're spending way too much time yeah. devoting something to someone like that. So the best thing you can do is be successful <laughs> and then go, ah, look at what I, huh. I'm actually living happy. All right, mm-hmm. next one. I'm happy to accept criticism from those more qualified. I said true. I said sometimes. Okay, both of them can be orange answers for that. Um, because number one thing I wrote there when I, that is, I don't think it, I should actually have um, not criticism. It should actually be um, I'm happy to p- accept feedback, you know, from those more qualified. Because criticism is in two different ways. True critiques of something is actually saying this is how to do it better. What we see now in society is criticism is that was terrible. Yeah. What are you doing this? Um, those more qualified who are great. <laughs> won't put it poorly. Yeah. They will make it so that you actually feel like, oh yeah, I'm learning something from this. So in other words, if you can imagine, if I'm telling you you've got some yellows on your sheets, that could be seen as criticism. There's something wrong. And I'm actually going, no, there's not. Mm. These, are, these are things you're learning on the way. So in other words, if you are especially, um, you know, learning a sport, oh, when you're doing this or doing that, you could do it this way. And your camp, for instance, when you're taking that, that's going to be how you give feedback to people. Oh, yes, try this. How about this? Ah, oh, yeah, but when you've noticed this, and this is this big thing about mistakes. If you continually focus on people's mistakes, they disappear out of your life mm-hmm. and sometimes out of their own lives. And they do right. dumb things because they are miserable. If you focus on mistakes, All they the disappear. time. Yeah, out of your life. In other words, they don't want to be around you, even oh, though they might be. Right. Yeah, that's like a good question. Focus is in that, to fix it. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm yeah. talking about if you're just all the time if going, you're just dwelling yeah, on this it. is this. Oh, let's show you on the board, Josh, how many mistakes you made in the last quarter. I'm going, oh, as if Josh doesn't already know. And if you're a person who worries about your mistakes, <laughs> congratulations, we've just made it. So you're going to get worse and worse. Mm-hmm. And people don't get this. You want to make people play better? Help them get better. Don't tell them about what they do wrong. Yeah. All right, next one. Sometimes I think I know more than my boss. Parent, boss. I said true. True. Orange. Both orange answers. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <You were expecting. laughs> ah, again, what we're actually saying is this is all about how you feel about yourself. And it, do you sometimes know more than your parent? Yes. 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 Do you know? Of course you will. So in other words, even if I was coming for social media thing, oh, Josh, you know way more than me. Isaac's got more science in some areas than I've got. Great older people actually respect that younger people have expertise in different areas. My thing is I won't respect your opinions much in my field until you've done a lot. <laughs> it doesn't make you bad people. It's yeah. actually saying, but you might go, Jenny, have you thought of? And if you say that to me and I haven't thought of it, I'll work out, uh, yeah. We'll start to do this. And this is where I go with young people in teams. If you, you've got to listen to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, you have any ideas? Give me some ideas. And that's one of the things I've found sometimes in the AFL and some of those, that they only allow people to, um, oh, you have to be here for three years before you can have an opinion. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? If I've got uh, some expertise, oh, you run out of thing. I've got another pen, Josh. Always, always, there will be another thing here we go. I don't know which ones work, so I haven't gone through them, but <laughs> we will always try that one. Thank you. And this is this always be prepared. This is a heavily weighted pen. <laughs> oh, it's not a pen, it's a light. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back on top. Next one. <laughs> um, I am often the captain or leader of the group. I said sometimes. sometimes. I said sometimes. Okay, so you two, that's both blank, and that's yeah. good. That's good. But you're starting to see, if you want to be, you've actually got a lot of orange between you, which gives you a lot of um, the qualities we want in leadership, all right? But if you're downing yourself at the moment or you don't want to be centre of attention and all of a sudden you made the leader, yeah. oh, that's something that we need to work with. That's putting yourself out there, getting used to doing this, being used to being interviewed. So, you know, with the golf guys, I used to take a camera and a microphone over when they were just about to hit off, even if it was... 
you know, no one else over at the golf course in the morning. Oh, it's a fine day here at the, uh, you know, like we're going to <laughs> listen. How are you feeling before you're hitting off? Because at some point you're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next one.